everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird, Archie. I've filmed a few Yes Style videos now. I've got my $500 Yes Style haul, I have my Sailor Moon makeup haul, I'm about to film a Yes Style prom dress haul, and obviously today I have the $500 Korean makeup haul. Basically what I tried to do was pick a couple of items for every step of makeup. Now I have primer, I've got foundation, blush, highlight, eyeshadow, basically everything that I could possibly think of. I have to say a huge thank you to Yes Style for gifting me all of this makeup. This is insane. I don't think I've ever seen so much makeup in my life. Now if you're new to my channel, I'm quite new to makeup. I've only just recently started getting into it. So I'm slowly building up my collection, but the makeup that I have had up until this point, a lot of it has been Japanese and Korean makeup. I try to go to Japan once a year if I can afford it. My last few trips, I picked up a whole bunch of Etude House makeup, some Tony Moly, Holika Holika, and I haven't really been able to find it in Australia. All of this makeup on Yes Style actually seems to be pretty cheap. It seems to be about the same price that it is if you buy it in Japan or Korea. So I really, really like that because when I go into the face shop and places like that, Korean makeup stores in Australia, it seems to be like double the price. I will give you guys the prices, I will swatch them, we'll do a full day wear test. So if you hang around until the end, you can see how the makeup holds up by the end of the day. There's about 30 something items here. I don't think I'm going to be able to use all of them on my face. I'll try and swatch all of them for you. But if there's anything that I don't end up actually using and you want me to make a video about it, please let me know down below. So uh, with that, this is Archie. Archie is my feathered son, he is a bird, he sometimes screeches and he likes to chew on things and if that bothers you, perhaps go watch a different makeup video because the bird stays. On that note, we only have a couple more pins available for sale. Yes, we finally have merch, we have our little Archie pins. We have a few left for sale, so I will put the link in my description box down below in case you want to pick up one as well. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. The stuff that I have here today is mostly stuff that you guys asked me to review. I put it on my Instagram story that Yes Style was letting me have $500 worth of makeup and I said if there's anything that you want me to try out, let me know. So everything that's here is something that people sent me on Instagram. So hopefully you guys enjoy this and hopefully this answers some of your questions about the products if you were thinking of buying them. So the first thing that I have is this little headband. This is adorable, it's a little cat ear hairband. This is by Etude House. What I'm gonna have to do today, I will tell you guys all of the prices in Australian dollars. I often talk in American dollars because a huge amount of my audience is from America. But for me to be able to judge whether I think something is worth it or not, I really do have to say it in Australian dollars because in US dollars something might be $3, but in Australian dollars it might be like 5 or something and in my head I'll see the $3 and think, oh yeah, that's really good value. But in Australian dollars it's actually more. So today I'm going to be talking in Australian dollars. If you are curious about any of the prices, all of the links are in the description down below for each item so you can check it and see what it is in your own currency. So I am talking in Australian dollars today, just so you know. So this is $6, this little headband. I think it's pretty cute. It is a little bit weird, but hey, it's cute. What do you think, Archie? Do you like it? What do you think? Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this Holika Holika primer. This is an $18 primer, which I think for a primer, that's kind of like Sephora prices, right? It's got a really, really interesting looking bottle. It looks really beautiful. It's like this frosted plastic. And it's got these little colored beads on the inside, which is so cute. So it's called the Naked Face Balancing Primer. Now this retails for $18 on the Yes Style website. And it looks as though it has 35 grams in it. So this is by Holika Holika, and I really, really like Holika Holika. I think it's a fantastic brand. I've been using their skincare for a couple of years, and I really, really like it. It says it's blended with three kinds of petal, green tea, lavender, and rose hip. This primer from Holika Holika helps to create even skin tone. Now the texture, it's really, really wet, like extremely wet. It does smell really, really floral. <laughs> Like really floral. Okay, it's a little tiny bit tacky on my skin. Like if I go to wipe it across my face, I can kind of feel my skin tugging because it's quite tacky. So I'm just going to pat it instead of pulling. Something that always confuses me with these sort of things, you know, like primer that's supposed to even out skin tone. I never notice it. Like looking at myself on camera, I, I don't really see that it's 
balanced out my skin tone. I don't know if it's something that I suppose maybe throughout the day as the ingredients kind of sink into your skin, maybe that's how it's supposed to work. But anyway, that's that. The next thing that I have, now this is a little bit unusual and I'm not entirely sure what to do with these things, but I bought them because a lot of people asked me to try them out. These are Peripera ink correctors. They're in beautiful, beautiful colors. Now I've never used color correcting products ever. Look at these bottles, aren't they absolutely adorable? They're so cute. I just love the frosted plastic look. I'm a little bit nervous. On the website here, it says, the, the peach cancels out dark circles, the mint green hides blemishes, the lavender neutralizes sallowness, while the lemon yellow balances uneven skin tone. Okay, <laughs> with that I'm going to attempt to use these color correcting products. The peach cancels out dark circles. Alright, so let's grab this. This is called Dark Thief Peach. So this one, this is the peach and this is supposed to cancel out dark circles. So I guess we'll just put this under the... Yes, that is green. No, you can't have it. No, it's for money. It's for money, not for birdies. No. So I guess we'll just go in under the eyes with this, seeing as it's meant to be for dark circles. Oh, wow. I really like the applicator on this. It feels really, really nice. It put the product on really, really evenly. I guess I'll just use my finger to blend this out. I think I'm doing this right by putting it on over the primer and under the foundation. Okay, I think I went a little bit too heavy with that because it's really, really difficult to kind of blend all of this out. Like it's very, very wet under my eyes. So I think you could probably go a bit lighter than what I did just then. I just kind of treated that like I would treat concealer, but I don't think that I needed that much. Okay, I think I took that down a little bit too far, but this is my first time color correcting, so please forgive me. Next, it says the mint green hides blemishes. So we'll try that. I don't really have any blemishes on my face at the moment. I kind of have some down here maybe, a little bit here, up here. Yeah, okay, no, I do, I do. So this is what the mint looks like. It is so cute. I absolutely love the color of this. I feel like this will look really, really nice on my vanity. Okay, so hide blemishes. I have some there, here, I've just put it in these spots like this. Okay, this one is quite sheer. I don't think that it's covering up my blemishes that well. There was a lot of redness here above my eyebrow and that does seem to have been canceled out. But yeah, that one is a lot more sheer than what the peach one was. So next it says the lavender neutralizes sallowness. I have no idea what sallowness means. This just says a color corrector which neutralizes and cancels out skin imperfections for an even fair skin tone. Lavender color brightens yellow skin tone. There you go. I don't really have any kind of yellow skin tone. Maybe I might just put a little tiny bit. Uh, what is so fascinating about my sleeves? Don't, I'm gonna have to change my top. He will not stop chewing on my sleeves. What are you gonna chew on now? Oh, my earrings, great. I don't really have any kind of yellowish skin tone at the moment. Sometimes I get a bit yellow under my eyes, but I've kind of canceled that out. I think there is actually a little tiny bit of yellowness under my mouth, come to think of it. Just for the sake of using it. And then the last color is the lemon yellow, which is meant to balance uneven skin tone. And it says on the box, a color corrector which neutralizes and cancels out the imperfections. Lemon color brightens dull skin tone. Hmm, dull skin tone. Where would I need to be lightened? Usually wouldn't you be brightening your under eyes? Maybe I might put some up here. Almost treating it a bit like concealer. Now I've just done this simply for the sake of being able to use it. Okay, I have no idea if I did that color correcting right or not. Please let me know down below. I've never, ever, ever tried it. I'm just going based on what's on the website. Each one of these is about $10 and it comes with eight grams of product. I think it seems very heavily concentrated and I think I used a little bit too much of it on my face. So I think that this would last a long time for that $10. So now that I've done that, I'm going on to foundation. And I actually picked up this Gouda Tama. It's called the Egg Bun Puff and it's like a blending sponge. And it comes in this kind of plasticky bag. This is by Holica Holica. And this is just under $5. 
which for a blending sponge, I think that's great. Look, it's so cute. That's what it looks like. It's adorable. It's just, it's literally just Gude Tama. So I'm gonna go wet this and see how large that it puffs up, how much it expands. Okay, he basically doubled in size. So that's what he looks like. It's a really unusual shape. Uh, I'm really excited to give this one a try, but I do love the little tiny Gudotama face. I think that's adorable. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna try out, I have this Pony Effect. Now this is the Pony Effect Everlasting Cushion Foundation, SPF 50 plus with refills. So it comes in seven different shades. I went for the fairest shade. The reason that I tried this is because I was watching one of Tati's videos on Korean makeup and in the comments section, I saw hundreds of comments where people were saying, please review the Pony Effect Cushion Foundation. And also I had a lot of people send this to me in a DM as well. So I thought obviously it's popular or at least a lot of people are thinking of purchasing it. This is $35 and it comes with a refill, which is in this little sealed bag. So I'll hang on to that one. Now the shades, this is fair. It goes fair, nude beige, rose ivory, natural ivory, rosy beige, buff, and sand. So I think those are the only shades. So it doesn't have a huge shade range. However, this is a Korean makeup brand. And I think that they, they're really only catering to more Asian skin tones. It says, Pony Effect Everlasting Cushion Foundation is a cushion that moisturizes dry skin, keeping makeup lasting for a long time without having to reapply by quickly fitting on the skin with its makeup holding system. Apply as the last step of your base makeup regime or on its own for instant perfection without caking or making a mess. It says that there's 50 grams of product in here. Okay, so I'll just test it for my shade. You know what? That might actually even be too light for me. I only managed to buy one. I didn't manage to get a couple of shades, so I'm just gonna have to stick with it. Okay, so I'm gonna use the puff that it came with. The puff is really nice. It's a really unusual kind of texture. I'm not sure what it is. It almost feels feels kind of velvety and rubbery at the same time. Just dip in. Actually, actually no. Okay, it's very, very light. I don't know which shade that I should have gone for. I picked fair because I was certain that I would be the lighter shade, but this is too light for me, which is unusual. I often find it really, really difficult to find foundation that's as light as my skin. What I'm gonna do is go in with the Gudetama puff now just to try and blend everything out. Okay, the sponge, the Gunetama sponge actually feels quite um, hard. It's nowhere near as soft as my other blending sponges that I have. It could just be because it's the first time that I'm using it, but it does feel a little bit hard. The foundation did a really, really good job of covering up the color correction underneath. I was a little bit worried because it did come off as quite sheer at first, but I think it's got light to medium coverage. I wouldn't call it full coverage. What are you doing? Okay, the next thing that I'm going to use is this Pony Effect Concealer. This one is called the <laughs> Meme Box. Mimi Box Pony Effect Pro Fit Liquid Concealer. Now this is SPF 30 plus and it comes in three colors. The shades are Fair, Ivory and Beige. It says all around liquid concealer covers imperfections such as dark circles, redness, fine lines, pores and blemishes with a single touch. The lightweight formula adheres lightly but smoothly for a flawless look. Apply a small amount on blemishes and red spots. Blend well with fingertips. It says there's six mils in here. The concealer that I normally use is this NARS concealer. This is also six mil. But if you look at the difference in the size, I think that most of the size difference comes from simply the lid. And also it's a lot thinner than NARS one. It's thinner and longer. This Pony Effect one, it's shorter, but it's a wider kind of package. So there's six mils in here, and this is the fair shade. I'm hoping that the fair is light enough. If you have a look at the difference between my NARS concealer and this one, it looks as though this one has a little bit more yellowish undertones than what the NARS one does. I'm just gonna apply this in the normal places I would put my concealer, so under my eyes. Okay, the applicator is an unusual shape. Archie, get! Sorry mate, you're banished, go away. Go in on the nose, on my chin, a bit on my forehead. 
Now this is a $15 concealer on the website. That seems pretty reasonable. If it performs well, I think $16 is very reasonable because I'm pretty sure that my NARS concealer, I think that was 25 or maybe even 30. Okay, it's not quite as light as I would like my concealer to be, but it is the lightest shade that it came in. I'm loving this Gudetama blending sponge though for getting in under the eyes. It's got this pointed tip on it. I have extremely, extremely creasy under eyes. They are terrible. So I'm interested to see how this goes. I think it's going to kind of settle into the creases. And I mean, I do find that the more makeup that I put on under my eyes, the more my creases are accentuated, but I've never ever been able to find a product that stops that from happening ever, unfortunately. So I think that this is just going to be the same as all my other concealers. It'll settle into my creases. It does seem to be giving me some pretty good coverage under my eyes. But like I said, it's a bit too dark. I always like my concealer to be way brighter than this for me, but it's the lightest shade that it came in. This next thing, this is called the Etude House Play Stick. So this is meant to be a concealing duo. So it says it's a creamy contour duo that creates definition on your face. Apply the highlighting color on the T-zone and cheekbones and the shade on the side of the nose and below the jaw. On the website, I thought that this looked very, very similar to my NYX Wonder Stick. It's exactly the same thing where it's like a highlight on one side and a contour on the other. It looks almost identical to this. This shade is number two. So it says it's an all-in-one stick type contour duo that performs both shading and highlighting. So it says apply the light face stick to cover imperfections on the under eye area and around the lips. Use the dark shading stick to contour the hairline, refine the nose and sculpt the jawline in a natural way. I'll just pop this on the nose, a little bit on the chin. Wow, this is really creamy, like really, really creamy. So this is $12.60 on the website at the moment. And I think my NYX Wonder Stick was around the same sort of price. So I'll just pop this on the side here, a little bit on the edges of my nose. Wow, this is really creamy. Go around here. I can't believe how creamy this is. Let's see how it blends out. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm imagining it or not. Can't really see it. Like, I don't know whether it just blended out really, really well, or if the sponge kind of removed it. So I'll just go in a, a little bit more just here. Okay, that's a little bit better now. So that's somewhat contoured. It's, it seems like it's a little bit light for me, but I, I can see it, I can see it there. Mate, why are you being so bad? All right, so next I'm gonna try out this, this is three concept eyes. It's called the Maison Kitsune Primer Setting Powder in light beige. This is a $36 powder. Now I think that's really expensive. This says an ongoing setting powder which absorbs excess sebum and sweat selectively to control your skin's oil water balance, keeping your makeup looking clean and fresh all day long. Tightly sticks onto the rugged pores and grooves of the skin with a silky soft matte finish. Dispense a small amount onto the puff, then smooth along the texture of your skin and pat to increase adherence. So this only comes in two shades. It's got light beige or medium beige. I think it has really lovely packaging. It's a metal tin. Okay, so just taking it on the puff. I think this might be a little bit too beige for me, but I'm just gonna pop it on spots where I tend to get oily. Hmm, it smells lovely. It smells like baby powder. Let's go in under the eyes with it on my forehead up here. This is actually shifting my foundation underneath. I can see it's kind of like balling up on my forehead. So I think that that might be because I kind of swiped it a little bit. It could be because of the puff. I normally wouldn't apply my setting powder with a puff. I would normally go in with a brush. I'm just gonna use this MAC 150 because this is what I would normally use for setting powder. Well, $36, I don't think that's worth it at all. I've used a fair few setting powders and I just think for what it is, it doesn't seem to be a lot of product. Nothing here says how much product is in there, but it doesn't seem like a lot. Go away, go away, go away. Yeah, I don't think that this one's worth it. Although we'll see how my foundation wears throughout the day. And also for only two shades and for $36, they kind of really 
cornering their market. There's not very many people that can benefit from this when you think about it. Okay, next up I have a couple of different blush shades. These are all Gudetama. They're Holika Holika Lazy and Joy Jelly Dough Blusher. How to use, press lightly to get appropriate amount of blush and pat on the cheeks for a perfect rosy finish. So there's six grams of product in these. I have three shades, apricot jelly, plum jelly, and cherry jelly. I might have to go for a more orangey tone, which is probably going to be the apricot jelly. The packaging is so adorable. Just have a look at this. Look at the attention to detail. Even the puff has the little Gudetama face on it. Each blush has a little mirror inside, which is unusual. I don't normally see blush that comes with a mirror. I guess I'll use the puff that it came with. I mean, I wouldn't normally apply blush with a puff, but I'll give it a go. Okay, well that's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, the puff is doing absolutely nothing. It's not coming off at all. So I'm gonna have to grab a brush. Okay, I'm really, really loving this colour on me. I find that orange shade blushes always look better on my skin tone. And I think that this is lovely. I have to work with it a bit to build it up, but I think that that's given me really, really nice even coverage with the blush. It doesn't seem patchy in any areas. It's $10 for these blushes. $10 for something as adorable as that with a product this nice. That's definitely worth it. I can highly recommend that one for sure. Next, I'm using highlight. Now, I'm a little bit nervous about this. I picked up these two highlighting shades. These are by Peri Pera again. This is in their ink range. These are ink highlighters. So there's Lavender Space Beam and Pink Shiny Beam. There was also a third shade called Kitten Beige, I believe, but that one was out of stock. There's eight grams of product in these, and these are about $12 each. So we'll see how blinding they are, whether or not they're worth it. Now, I unboxed all of this stuff live on Instagram to show everyone the items that I chose. And when it came to the highlight, I said to everyone, which one do you want me to use when I do the video? And so many people asked for the purple one. There's the both of them. The colors are really, really beautiful. So I'm using the purple one today. So again, it's just got a little sort of doe foot applicator. Instead of going straight on with that, I'm just going to put it on the back of my hand and then I'm going to take the Gudetama Puff. Oh wow, it's really nice. I think I will actually just go straight on with it. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's not too intensely purple. I thought that it could be a little bit weird, like weirdly purple, but it's not too purple. Just pop some up here. Can you go away? Wow, this is so unusual. I've never used a purplish highlight before. I feel like it just needs to be built up a tiny little bit. So for a $12 highlight in something with packaging that adorable, I think that one's worth it for sure. Okay, I have a few different eyeshadow palettes here. I have an Etude House one, which is a cherry blossom themed one. And I also have a couple of Gudetama ones as well. Now these Gudetama ones are not available on the website anymore, but I'll still show you guys some swatches of these. So this Etude House one, this is $29 for this eyeshadow palette. Now it does seem to be quite a small palette. There's 10 different shades in here. The shades are absolutely beautiful. I think they're so nice. There's a lot of sort of rosy gold shades in here, really, really nice shimmery pink. Looks like we've got three mattes, six or seven kind of shimmery shades. I didn't buy anything to prime my eyelids with, unfortunately. So I might just use a tiny little bit of concealer and set that with some powder. Okay, just before I move on, my under eyes are creasing so badly. Like it's absolutely terrible how badly they're creasing. And that's with the powder. So like I said, I'm really not a fan of that three concept eyes setting powder. Eyebrows are going to be a little bit difficult today because I did order an eyebrow product, but it ran out of stock. But what I thought I'd do is give this a try. This is a Sailor Moon brown liquid eyeliner. I've tested this on my eyebrows before and it actually seems to work pretty well to get some really nice fine strokes. And then I'm going over the top of that with this Etude House eyebrow kind of gel. 
I'm just gonna speed through this quickly because I am no expert at doing eyebrows and this isn't even an eyebrow product, but I just thought I'd do it for fun just to see how it goes. Okay, I kind of feel like that was a bad idea because they are way too dark for me and I didn't really have as much control over that liquid liner as I would have over a regular brow pencil, but hey, you know, this is all about trying something new and interesting, so I guess it kind of worked. They are way too dark for me though and I don't think I did the shape right, but ah well. Now onto eyeshadow. So I'm going to use this Etude House eyeshadow palette. Now this is a almost $30 palette. You get 10 shades. It's not very big, but I'm interested to see how it goes. I think what I'll do, I'll go in with this shade as a base, deepen it up with these two, cut the crease, and then put on this one, and then this one on the outer corner. Okay, so just starting off with this shade here. Okay, straight away, this is very pigmented. Putting it on my lid, it actually seems a little bit darker than what it is in the pan. Yeah, that's unusual. That color is way darker on my eyelids than what it actually is in the pan. That's so strange. Okay, now I'll go in with this shade here, just to kind of deepen that up a little bit. Okay, I'm really, really happy with how pigmented those first two shades are. They're lovely. So now I'll take this kind of darker shade and I'll just put that just on the outer corner. Okay, I'm gonna use this light shade on the end here to go in under the brow bone. Now I'm gonna use that same Pony Effect Concealer to try and cut the crease, so we'll see how we go. That worked surprisingly well to cut the crease. I'm actually really happy with that. So I'll just try this pink one now. Okay, and I'm just dying to use this hot pink shade here, so I'll put this on the outer edge. Okay, I think I'll just deepen it up with that dark brown shade just on the outside again. And I'll just take the light color on the inner corner and then I think we're basically done. Okay, so for $30, I think that's actually pretty good value considering how many looks you could make with this. With the three mattes and all the shimmers, I think that you could get a couple of really, really good looks out of that one. I think that those two pink shades that I used though, they are very, very similar funnily enough. So what I'm gonna do now, I actually have a couple of these Etude House and Peri Pera Twinkle Eyes. They're like liquid eyeshadow, a little bit like the Steeler Liquid Metals. So I'm gonna give some of those a try just over the top. These ones by Peri Pera, they are $10 each. And these ones by Etude House are $16 each. So there's this kind of like shimmery gold color by Etude House. And there's also this silver color. Then for the Peri Pera Sugar Twinkles, there is this really, really nice rose gold color. And there's this pearly kind of pink as well. So I think because this is a pink eye look, I'm gonna use this Peri Pera Sugar Twinkle. They all seem to swatch really nicely. The colors are so ridiculously pigmented. So what I'll do, I'm just going to pop a tiny little bit with this doe foot applicator just in the center of my eyelid. Oh, wow. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's this beautiful, beautiful shimmery pink. I'll see if I can build it up a little bit more. That is just such a nice pop on my eyelids. I love it. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna try and do some eyeliner. So I picked up this Tony Moly. This is called the Mark Waterproof Gel Liner. Okay, so it's in this box like this. It looks like it's got two pens. Oh, that's cool, it actually, it comes with two, that's great. So you just open it like this, it twists off. All right, now I've been using the Quick Flick for the past year. The Quick Flick is basically, it's an Australian brand and it's literally just an eye, eyeliner stamp where all you do, you just, you just stamp and then it gives you the perfect wing. So I'm a little bit nervous because this is basically all I've been using for the past year. So this is a little bit terrifying. I haven't used a gel liner in ages. Let's see how it swatches on my hand. Okay, it's very, very dark. The brush seems to be really nice. Wow. Oh my gosh. I don't believe it. So this is $12 on Yes Style, and this is supposedly waterproof. Okay, well, I didn't do such a good job with that because I am absolutely useless at using gel liner. 
but I can say I found it really, really easy to apply. It was so smooth, so pigmented, but I'm noticing that it's kind of drying down a lighter shade than what it went on as. So it went on as really, really black, but it's drying down more gray. I've tight lined just with some Sephora waterproof eyeliner. So now what I'll do is go in with some mascara. Now this is a pony effect mascara. This is $22 for this mascara, which is a little bit more than what I would normally pay. I mean, I often just go for drugstore mascara, but I know that mascaras can get very, very pricey. So we'll have a look at this wand. Okay, this is a very, very strange wand. It's literally like a comb. So I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. Okay, this is really strange. Okay, there's hardly anything coming off. So I don't know if that's just because it's new mascara or if it's because it's not very good. Start at the roots, wiggle the wand back and forth up the length of your eyelashes. Okay, go away. So wiggle back and forth. All right. Okay, we're slowly getting somewhere, slowly. Well, it's definitely not clumping up, so that's good. And it doesn't seem to be flicking anywhere either. I'm really not sure what I think about this. I'm having to go over with multiple, multiple coats to get any volume. Okay, it's giving my bottom lashes a lot of volume. They're really, really lengthening up. But I'm just finding it a little bit clumsy to use just because it's literally like a toothbrush. So it's just really awkward to use. All right, we're done. First impressions of this mascara, I can't say that I would get this again. Now this was free. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't spend my own money on it. I don't really recommend it. It's just really, really awkward to use. Maybe some people might like it. I mean, the end result, like it just looks like a regular mascara to me. Any of my mascaras deliver this sort of result. So for $22, I think you could probably pick up a similar priced mascara at the drugstore or cheaper, and it might even give you better results. I'll just give you a close up. It's okay. I wouldn't say it's fantastic. So now I'll go in with some lashes. Now I picked up these, these are Tony Molly again. These lashes are $6.75. You know, I normally buy my lashes from Daiso and they're $2.80. So this is, I mean, $6 something, I don't think it's that expensive for lashes, but they are a little bit more expensive than what I normally pay. I normally just get Japanese Daiso eyelashes. They're so cheap and I love them. So speaking of Daiso, I have some Daiso black eyelash glue that I'm gonna to use today. Now I'll probably have to trim these. Okay, this is delicate work. Hopefully with the lashes, this will all come together. Okay, I think these are a really pretty style. These ones are called the Dolly Girl Wing. There's a few different styles though. They also had Dolly Girl Shock and Dolly Girl Kiss, but I really like these ones that are kind of thinner in the inner corner and then they kind of flare out like that. I think they're so pretty. I think they look really natural. I kind of had a little bit of an issue when I trimmed them. I trimmed too much off the right eye. So it looks a little bit uneven. I did notice when I peeled them off this backing here though, the glue that it was used to adhere to this, the glue was kind of like stuck all over the eyelash. So I had to kind of pluck it off. Aside from that, I think they're really nice. They're very soft. They're really, really dark black too. They're a little tiny bit shiny. Okay, now moving on to the lips. I got a few different lip colors. I got these. These are the two-tone lip tint kind of balm things. This is quite a Korean trend to have like this sort of ombre kind of lip where it's darker in the center and then it's lighter on the outside. But I also picked up this plastic case from Etude House for the Cherry Blossom series. And then it comes with an insert. These come in six different colors. So I grabbed this shade, which is Cherry Blossom Latte. So I'm, I'm just not sure which one I want to use. Like this Cherry Blossom one is really, really pretty. Maybe I'll just try out some of these two-tone ones first and then I might have to go over the top with the other lip shade. In my Instagram live, I tried out Tomato Sherbet, I think it was called, yeah, Tomato Sherbet. I really didn't like that shade. So I grabbed Cotton Candy, which is this kind of pink shade. This is the Tomato Sherbet. It's an orangey kind of pink. There was also this one, which is called Fruits Candy Bar, which is this nice kind of hot pink. And then there's Tangerine Slice, which is very, very vibrant orange. 
I think I might go with this fruits candy bar just because it seems to match my eye look the most. Now the packaging is really unusual. It's really, really cute. It's a little bit plasticky. I was a bit disappointed in terms of how it feels. It does feel the tiniest bit cheap. This looks really strange. It's go away. Here goes nothing. Okay, I can't say I'm such a fan of these. These are $23 each. Now I think that's a lot. $23, that's, uh, that's a lot of money and I don't think that I like it very much. The shades that I've tried so far, now I've tried two on my lips and I haven't really liked either of them. It is quite pigmented. I don't think that I really suit this two-tone look. I have really, really small lips and this just kind of makes them look smaller because it looks as though my lips are where the pink part is and then where the second tone is kind of disappears into my skin and it really does make my lips look smaller. So I'm not such a fan of this. Okay, I'm gonna try out this Etude House one. The case itself was about $8 and it comes in a few different styles. The styles that I really, really liked, which were a light sort of pastel blue and pink, they were all sold out. So that's why I got this darker one. But there are so many beautiful, I, I mean, I saw these in Harajuku and I was so tempted to buy them, but I actually think they were more expensive in Harajuku, maybe because it's a touristy area. But yeah, they're $8 for the case. So these infills, they're $12 and I think there's six different shades. So the shade that I picked up is called Cherry Blossom Latte. It's got a beautiful cherry blossom as the actual shape of the lipstick. Now this color, I think this is gonna be really nice. Okay, I love that. Now that was only $12 for that color, which I think is so much more worth it than the Laneige two-tone lip bars. There's also these, I picked these up. These are Laneige two-tone correcting sticks. They're really unusual. It's this gigantic triangle like this. Now this one is called Almond, and this is like a contour stick, but I actually used the, the Etude House contour, so I didn't get a chance to use that one. But these are huge. And there's also this one, which is called the Purple Blue Correcting Stick. Now I shied away from this because I'm really, really not sure how I'm supposed to use it, but this is what it looks like. It's so beautiful though, don't you reckon? It's so pretty. But yeah, I just wasn't sure at all how I'm supposed to use it. These are expensive though, these are $30 each. But I suppose because you do get a lot of product, there's seven grams in this. If you know how I'm supposed to properly use that correcting one, let me know. The contour one actually looks like it would have worked pretty well based on the swatch, but I'm just not sure exactly how that would suit me, but it's in the shade Almond. So that's part of the reason I picked it up because you know, we love almonds here. And the only other thing that I didn't get a chance to show you guys was the Peri Pera mini fridge. This is full of different products. It's got a lip tint, a cheek tint, and I think it's also got some sort of eyeshadow as well. So I think I might actually do a separate video for this one if you guys want me to, because I feel like I can't really use these products in combination with the stuff that I'm wearing on my face right now. That's it. There is one last product that I forgot to try, and that is this Tony Moly. Perfume Bunny Bar. These are $12 each. There's three different colors. There's the purple, there's an orange, and there's a white. It didn't really specify what the scent was meant to be, but it just kind of smells like, like a clean bathroom. If you walked into a really, really clean, fresh bathroom with that kind of like citrusy smell, that's what this smells like. So I suppose you're just meant to like rub it. I'll tell you what, that is adorable packaging. I do absolutely love that packaging. I think it's so cute. Okay guys, there we go. That is the completed look. My face feels a little bit damp and a little bit wet. I think the eyeshadow is absolutely stunning. And the highlight is really, really cool too. And the blush shade really, really suited me. Oop, I forgot, let me put back in my nose piercing. Not such a fan of that setting powder. My under eyes are shockingly, shockingly creased. That's probably the worst creasing I've had on my under eyes in a long time. And I don't know if it's because of the concealer or if it's because of the color correcting that I put on. I mean, I really don't know. I'll have to work with these products a little bit more to try and identify where the problem is coming from. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now is get on with my day and I will come back later this evening. I'll probably give it eight hours and I'll come back and do like a final check-in to see how it all holds up. Hang around guys and I'll show you a check-in at the end of the day. Alrighty guys, well, it has been eight hours since I applied the makeup. A couple of things that I have done in that time, I have filmed an entire new video I was filming for about two and a half hours. I have also eaten dinner, 
I have drunk some wine. I have given my fiance a big kiss when he came home from work. So I think the lipstick has suffered through a lot. The foundation on my nose has definitely broken apart in some spots. I reckon that's probably happened because I gave Dan a hug and a kiss and I've probably brushed up against his face. So it's worn off from here. We've got some blemishes showing through here and here. And also up here on the forehead, we've also got some color showing through as well. Uh, I'm a little bit shiny in my T-zone, but I'll tell you what is holding up fine. The highlight, which I put here, here, and on the cheekbones, that is holding up perfectly well. The eyeshadow hasn't budged at all. It hasn't creased. Speaking of creases, the under eyes are looking shocking. However, they were shocking at the start of the day. I mean, 10 minutes after applying it, they were looking shocking, and they still look exactly the same. They haven't changed since then. <laughs> the forehead is looking fine, and the side of my face is looking all right too. The blush is still there. The eyeliner is still there. The mascara seems to be holding up okay as well. Oh, and the eyebrows. And the eyebrows, that's an entire new situation. I mean, I did my eyebrows with eyeliner. <laughs> But they're actually, they're not doing too bad. Like I said, they're a little bit dark for me, but they've actually held up completely fine. Like they haven't rubbed off or anything. So really my areas of concern are that the under eyes were so creasy and I'm thinking that that's more something to do with the fact that I put on color correcting and I did foundation and concealer and powder. Like all of those things combined, I think have led to these terrible, terrible under eyes. I don't blame it on the foundation because in other areas the foundation looks fine. Now none of this stuff was marketed as long wearing so I'm not too upset about it. I feel like the primer could have maybe been a bit better to help the product stay because like I said it has come apart from my nose, it's come away here and it's come away from my t-zone so maybe the primer could have done a bit of a better job than that. But I will continue to use these products in future videos and uh, see how they work on their own, maybe not necessarily in combination with the other products that I use today. I must say I'm, I'm really happy with this eyeshadow. I think that this is going to become an everyday eyeshadow palette for me just because the colors really, really suit my complexion and it is very long lasting and really nice and pigmented as well. That is the $500 Korean makeup haul. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Join the flock. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah.